Hey there, Jet Boosters. My name is RR Abroad, and I'm here to help you learn how you can set up filtering through your collection, especially when your CMS has an option field. And we're going to learn how we can do that using Jet Boost. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. As you can see here in the designer, we already have our collection list and we even have our drop down right here. But as you can see, if we go to the live page, it is currently not working. If I select any particular um, option, it's not going to filter through. And we're gonna go ahead and apply the Jet Boost filter so that we can go ahead and filter through these. Let's go ahead and go to designer and check out how our collection list is set up. So we'll go over here, we go to our blog post, and we added a field called uh, type. Now this is an option field where you have a drop down right here and you have our different options, web design, web development, logo design, and motion graphics. And we're allowing people to select only one type of option. Now you can actually go ahead and filter through this using Webflow natively. So if we go ahead and go to the element settings right here, and we go to the part where it says filters. I can go ahead and press this button right here and then add a filter. And the filter we're gonna add is the option field called type and the type equals web design. What it's going to do is it's only going to show the collection items where web design is the option that we selected. So therefore we are only selecting the relevant blog post. But the problem here is a user is not able to do it. We as a creator have to do this ourselves manually. But we want to allow a user to select um, a special, uh, an option or a type here so that they can go ahead and filter to the relevant topic. And that is where JetBoost comes in. Let's go ahead and learn how we can apply the JetBoost filtering. We'll go ahead and go to JetBoost right here. And now we are in our JetBoost dashboard. We already connected our website. It is called JetBoost Video Template. And all you have to do is make sure that you are logged into your Webflow account. And as you've connected it, you will show what websites or what account you want to connect JetBoost to. And what we're doing now is we're gonna add a booster. So let's go ahead and click Add Booster right here. And here are our different options, our different boosters that we can add. We're gonna go ahead and click Dynamic List Filters. And then let's click create. And then from here, all we're really gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and follow the directions that has been given to us. But first off, we see here, which collection on your site do you want to filter? Let's go ahead and click this drop down, And the collection list we're gonna use is the blog post. Now, if any time that you don't see your collection list or even the fields here on these drop downs, you can go ahead and press this button right here which refreshes kind of like the browser cache or maybe refreshes the connection. Maybe you added some new connections or anything like that. Just make sure that you publish your site so that JetBoost is able to go ahead and connect to all this. And so which field in your collection do you want to filter by? We want to go ahead and filter the type right there. That is the option field called type. It's only going to show those who are the reference fields, a multi-reference or an option field. Now, here are a couple options that we could select. Can someone select multiple options for this field? This one, we're gonna go ahead and click no, because it can only have one option. Now you can have multiple options, maybe if it's uh, like a radio button or a ch I'm sorry, a checkbox, and you have a multi-reference. But in this particular one, we're only gonna be selecting um, option field. Uh, or sorry, no multiple selections. And then if we can add selected filters to the URL. So what this is, is sometimes you have UTM parameters um, or anything like that that you wanna to add to the URL. And that's a diff different topic for a different time. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click no on add to URL. And then let's go ahead and press continue. And there's our first green checkbox. That means we are good to go. Let's go move on to the next step. Now the next part we're gonna do is go to your site's custom code settings. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna copy this code we're gonna add this code. Now, good thing about actually step number two is we only have to do it really one time. Once we've done it, we'll go ahead and skip this step on our next um, boosters. Let's go ahead and copy this. We can copy this on the custom code section, usually on the head code. Now you have an option here. 
you can go ahead and copy it and paste it on the page settings. But I particularly like to use it on the project settings. And the reason why is I want to be able to use JetBoost on anywhere on my website. If I want to add a new page and I will need to use JetBoost, I don't have to copy and paste the code again. What this does is adds the code to every single page. Now, if you are only going to use that code on one page and that's it, you can go ahead and add it on the page settings. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put it on the project settings. Let's go ahead and paste that code, save the changes. And before you test it, remember to publish. Once you've pasted the custom code and once you've saved the changes and once you've published, we'll go ahead and go to JetBoost. And we are kind of waiting for the publishing here a bit. Now that it's published, let's go to JetBoost and let's test and continue. And there you go. It detected the code. So let's move on to the next step. The next step is now adding some classes and an embed to our collection list wrapper and our collection item. Let's go ahead and copy this, um, this particular class. And what JetBoost does is it kind of generates a class, uh, um, uh, kind of an, a code there that will connect it to JetBoost. So let's go ahead and go to the dashboard right here. I'm sorry, the designer, click the designer. And let's go to the collection list wrapper of the blog post collection that we were trying to filter through. So in this case, we're going to this one right here and make sure you put it on the wrapper. We'll add a class. We'll just paste it. And there we go. We now have a class on this collection list. And then we want to add this embed inside the collection list. So we'll go ahead and copy this. And what we're actually going to do is we can place it really anywhere because it's an embed that doesn't really have any HTML or anything that you can see. Um, it's, it's not going to be shown anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and put it inside this bottom wrapper. I'll go ahead and add an embed. And inside the embed, we're going to add that code. And then save and close. And then before we test, we want to go ahead to two things. We want to first of all, click publish. And then go ahead and click publish right here. And then once we published it, we want to actually go ahead and put the URL. Now this particular one, we're actually using the home slug. So as you can see here, we are using the, well, we don't have the slug here because we're using the home page, even though I entitled it filter. So we actually don't have to do anything here because we're going to the home page. So go ahead, test and continue. And there you go. It's detected the class and the HTML embed, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Now, the next step is creating our filter. Now, first off, what element do we want to use for our filter? What we used is a select element. And let me just go over that select element real quick. This is a drop down. So what you want to do is actually create a form block. And then inside the form, you add a select field. Okay, it is this element right here which is the select item. And then in that field, you're going to add your different options by going to the element settings. And here are your different options. So we're going to go ahead and click select. And what we'll do is we'll copy that same class, actually, not that same class, but the same notice, that same kind of generated code, but we'll do it on the filter itself. So we're going to go to select field and then add a class on this select field. There we go. And then this is the important step right here. You want to add your options. We've already added our options and what we want to make sure we want to make sure that everything matches. What do we want to match? Well, first off, we want to go to the collection list and then go to the blog post and then go to the option field that we created. The four ones are web design, web development, logo design, and motion graphics. Make sure they match exactly. Okay. We'll go to the page itself and then we'll go to our select field. We'll go to the element settings and then we have our four options right here on the select field. You can see here, web design, web development, logo design and motion graphics. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click this and make sure that this, the type and the value match together as well. So you want to go to all of them, make sure they match. 
and then you should be good to go. Now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and test it continue. Now the URL, usually you want to put the URL here. Since with this one, we don't, we're going to the home page, so we'd have to add it in here. We'll go ahead and test and continue. Now there's one issue found. What is that issue? We didn't publish. So we're going to go ahead and click publish. But make sure before you test and continue that you're always publishing. Now that we're published, we'll go ahead and click test and continue again. And there you go. We've passed. And then JetWiz will do some final checks. No issues detected. Press continue. And the last thing we're going to do, first off, confetti. Hey, Joy, you've set up your filtering. Go ahead and rejoice and uh, go do a happy dance. And there you go. Now that we have it set up, let's go ahead and test it on the published site. As you can see here, let's go ahead and actually refresh this. And we'll go ahead and select web design. There's our web design blog post, web development, logo design, and motion graphics. That, my friends, is how you set up filtering through your CMS using JetBoost.